Okay, so so hello, my name is Jakub Dubec, and uh, as was said, I'm the student of Slovak University of Technology in Bratislava, and I would like to talk about building air quality monitoring IoT platform. So firstly, I would like to start with, uh, oops, ah, yeah. I would like to start uh, with some intro into uh, air pollution and air quality measurement. Uh, currently, there, there are several different indexes used to define air quality and uh, impact of air quality pollution on the human health, uh, such as air quality index made by United States Env Environmental Protection Agency, and another one, a European air quality index by European Environment Agency. Uh, both of these indexes are based of, on the concentration of pollutants such as particle matter, ozone, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide, uh, which are calculated in uh, uh, short, short term uh, intervals like each 24 hours or each hour. And then using some quite simple calculations are expressed as table, which is present on the, on the presentation screen. And according, according to that, there are some health risk according to the index values. So our goal was to, uh, our goal was to create a simple data agnostic IoT platform designed to collect data from sensors as simple as possible. The main idea was to create a data IoT hub, which, are, which is easy to access and easy to implement. Uh, we were already uh, expire, uh, in, inspired by existing projects such as Sensor the Community, but we, will, we would like to improve their technology stack and to introduce some new ways how to access to the process data or to the raw data. So by accessibility, we mean that most of the existing projects use HTTP to data collection and distribution. So the real-time data processing and real-time data collection is not that easy for third parties because you have to pull data using HTTP and which is not, not ideal, let's say. And so we don't need uh, this HTTP stack uh, the, uh, in communication between IoT sensors and the central node where the data are stored and processed. And also we don't need to use HTTP always to collect this data. For example, we can use some subscriber publisher model to access this data. Uh, also, we would like to have uh, low cost sensor devices and also low cost maintenance uh, for these devices and this architecture, because a network such as this is supposed to be used in amateur, amateur on semi-professional environments like low clubs or mm, non-profit organizations, which are, which are focused on air pollution problems in uh, some local areas or nationwide organizations. So we would like to try to keep the maintenance costs as slow as possible. Uh, also, there are, uh, we would like to introduce new ways, or not, not new ways, to improve interoperability, interoperability and access, extendability of uh, such network by sending our data to already existing, uh, exist, uh, to have ability to send these data, our collective data to already existing solutions simplify third party data processing and to have ability to uh, community members to have their own sensor devices and this solution also supposed to be data agnostic so if you would like to measure luminosity or uh, singular data you basically you basically can uh, also the solution is supposed to be developer friendly and uh, because of as more de developers you have and as uh, simple solution it is, so there's much more chance to be used or, or used by another members. So let's continue with the proposed solution. 
uh, we would like to use uh, constraint application protocol for communication between sensor and server and MQTT for real time data distribution to consumers. So we, would, we are going to use simple machine to machine uh, protocol to provide data to the central node. And as soon as they arrived, we are able to publish this data to consumers which are subscribed for next uh, data processing. So we would like to switch from basic client-server architecture to publish a subscribe uh, model of communication. Uh, as, an, uh, as an example, we used ASP32-based uh, uh, devices to data collection. And we would like to, and we focused on the simple firmware solution, which is basically platform independent. So the device is just measure data and send it to the server where they are going to be processed and distributed. Uh, we proposed two variants of such uh, IoT network uh, to have a possibility to cover, uh, cover, cover new, more use cases and to move architecture close to the devices. So let's start with the uh, variant A. Uh, in such network, uh, IoT devices are sending data over internet directly to the central node where the data are stored and processed. And the central node is uh, provides using MQTT live data to each sub subscriber. Uh, as we talk about uh, interoperability uh, goal, so we can really easily implement uh, MQTT consumers, which will provide this data to already existing solutions using the standard uh, HTTP communication as was described before. Uh, so the data pro uh, processed directly on the central node using the worker services subscribed for the measurements and stored in some kind of time series database. We use time scale database to store our data. Uh, the second variant is um, proposal to move uh, infrastructure closer to the sensors. Uh, this could be useful for setup where there is a national wide community with some hierarchy with local community members based on era where there are communities uh, distributed all over the era or nation which are have their own uh, local nodes which are collecting data from the local era members. So the node is closer to the devices because it's, for example, in the same city or in the same state where our data processed for the local usage because you don't, if you are a consumer, you don't always need data from a whole network. For example, if you are, if you are a city which would like to have real-time data about uh, air pollution, in, the, in their streets, you don't need to access the central node and download or subscribe to all data from all areas, from all, from all areas. And then we introduce the central node, uh, which is mainly used for redistribution of data to consumers with, uh, who are interested in uh, data from all, all nodes in the network. Uh, also the Main advantage, uh, one of the advantage, advantages of local nodes are that you don't need such computing power to collect data only for a few devices sur surrounded by you. So it's supposed to be cheaper to collect only your uh, to maintain your local node instead of, instead of maintaining whole ecosystem or one central node where all devices are talk talking. Uh, Okay then, so future works, we would like to measure cons consumption impact on the IoT devices. There are already works which are articles about uh, co-op uh, power consumption in comparison to the other machine to machine exchange, data exchange protocols, but we are interested in if the chain if, if there are significant uh, difference with, uh, between such, uh, such, such solution. And another thing to try is to use HTTP free in IoT, because as I, as I said, the already existing solutions use, uh, use HTTP 
to collect data from devices. And we are interested if uh, there are some differences in performance when we use HTTP3 because there were there were change uh, in transport protocol from TCP to UDP. So we are interested if there is some kind of significant difference between uh, performance or power consumption. Uh, basically, uh, that's, that's all. So I'm looking forward to your questions and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Jakob, for this interesting presentation. Uh, questions, please. Yes, Miroslav. Yes, maybe I can start with a short question. So in the variant B you presented, uh, can you say something more about the central node? Which kind, which technology do you use? And it's in slide uh, six. Uh, yeah, wait a sec. Okay, dokie. Uh, yes, uh, this one. So we would like to use Kafka for Kafka. Uh, Apache uh -huh. Kafka for data redistribution and to use such data pipelines to provide these real-time data to the consumers. So local node. Yeah, yeah that's a reasonable. Uh, okay, I, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing you mentioned HTTP three, uh, so it relies on UDP. Uh, so how is the reliability of data transfer then secured? Uh, in this use case, so uh, we don't care that much about uh, mm -hmm. reli 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 uh, okay. reliability I of, of uh, data transfer because mm -hmm. of uh, uh, we think there's the sensor is supposed to send data quite often, so we don't okay. really care if there is some data loss. And also, understood. The I see that Andre Andre has a question, so he can ah, yeah. he can ask. Andre, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, I have maybe similar questions to Miroslav uh, because you said that you are using MQTT and constraint application protocol and HTTP. What is the reason why to have such a rich mix of protocols? But because if you consider that the communication is not so, let's say, complex that you need to have these different protocols, mm. it's based, based on technology used and you cannot select something else or uh, what's the reason? We use constraint application protocol in a sensor to server communication because of the low data overhead yeah. and uh, its simplicity. So the firmware on the sensor devices is quite simple. Mm -hmm. And we use MQTT in communication between the local nodes and uh, data subscribers or uh, local node and central node because MQTT use uh, open uh, TCP window. So it's quite, it's really useful when we are sending or providing real-time data. There's a much lower overhead and power consumption if you are subscribed uh, to MQTT broker where we are waiting for real-time data. So we are using MQTT because of possibility to have open, uh, to have open uh, communication window on the existing TCP windows. So we don't okay. use okay. MQTT in communication between sensors and nodes. We, then there is constraint application protocol used. Mm -hmm. And the communication using that constraint application protocol is secured or not? Because you it could that, be. That it, yeah, it, yeah, it could be, but basically it doesn't really matter because the architecture is supposed to be opened and it's only the data collection of uh, publicly accessible information. But yeah, oh, there's okay. a, there are possibilities to have uh, also constraint application protocol secured by TLS. Yeah, yeah, there's details for securing the protocol, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so it's only for read-only data, because I, I I thought that you also can use the protocol or you use this protocol for setting some, some things uh, on your I'm sensor sorry, or, or I, configuring. I, I'm sorry, I misheard you in the first part of the sentence. Okay, uh, uh, I... Originally, I thought that you also use uh, the constraint application protocol for setting some parameters. So now you said that it's only for reading the data, so you don't need to yeah, consider it. it's only for data okay, collection. Okay, okay. okay sorry. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I also have a question because you are mentioning, I'm, I, w I wonder about your um, design choices uh, with respect to MQTT because uh, it operates over TCP. So this requires more, more handshaking to set up communication links. 
so before messages can be exchanged. So this increases communication times. Uh, yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So it's but... not so efficient with respect to this. Yeah, but we would like to use to MQTT communication on basically between communication between multiple servers, not between devices. So the main use case is to have, we have central node where they, where data are collected, uh, are collected. and mm -hmm. if I, if, and I would access real-time data, so still I need to have real-time connection opened to access mm -hmm. this data because it's real-time communication. That's why we choose the MQTT to collect this data. It's mm -hmm. not in machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication. Okay. It's more like service-to-service but... -service communication. I see. But you need a security layer on top of that, right? Oh yeah, that's true. Because mm -hmm. it's it's a uh, yeah. communication to the data consumer or data processor. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. and the MQTT doesn't provide one. Mm? Okay. Thank you very much.